Tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou, e wakarongo mai nei ki tēnei o ngā hōtaka uh, ki runga i tō tātou nei taonga o te maunga nei, te korimako o Taranaki, o tira ki koutou rā e mātakitaki mai nei i tēnei o ngā pāpā o mata ora uh, ki runga i uh, Facebook. Poka mata, tēnā pia ke kua hono mai koe ki runga i uh, YouTube hoki. Uh, nā reira, ko ngā uh, kei te tuku ngā mei mata kui kui ki koutou katoa i tēnei o ngā rā. Anā, kei te ki te koutou, ko wai kei taku taa, ai rā, kei te tika koutou katoa, ko tu i au Bailey e noo mai uh, nei ki rungi i tēnei o ngā pai. Uh, nā reira, tēnā koe tu i au, uh, e me i ana ki koe hoki, uh, mō te whai wā ki te noo ta i ai ki ki tātou i tēnei uh, rā. Uh, nā reira e te whānau, ka tuku te rākau ki, ki aia, uh, ki te waka mo'o atu ki te katoa, uh, ko wai ia nō hea aua ahua tanga katoa. Uh, nā reira e hoa e tu i au e te tuakana, uh, kei a koe te wā. Kia ora e hoa. Um, kia ora koutou e whakarungo ana ki um, a māua kōro i te ato nei. Um, ai, ko tuhi au Bailey a hau, uh, Emily hoki, tuku ingwa pākia. <laughs> uh, he uri au nō Nāti Mutunga, ko nō Taranaki iwi nō Te Atiawa hoki. Um, e noho ana au ki Pungarihu, ki te tā o Pariaka Pā. Um, ai, ko au tēnei. <laughs> Nā mei. Koia, koia. Ai rā, kei... Uh e tino kaitia ki tēnei o te pā o Parihaka uh, nā reire mehi ana mō tō mahi uh, mō taua kaupapa nui o tātou e tuhi ao. So, tuhi ao, thank you. Thank you very much for joining um, joining us today. Uh, oh, there's a lot that you and I could be talking about today. <laughs> it could take us a long time, actually. But um, I just wanted to catch up with you in regards to the uh, representation uh, hui, oh, well, was one of their hui, but the up at the moment with Taranaki Regional Council, uh, where they voted last week to only have one uh, Māori ward seat available to, to, to us, essentially. Uh, and you've done the hard yards in there, along with others, to uh, push the council to think about actually uh, dropping another one of the general ward or urban rural ward seats um, in the north and to put in another option for for Tangata Māori or for our Hapuri. Uh, and that was voted against last week. Um, <laughs> so you were there uh, along with us and uh, Matuhani and a few others and then there were a few of us who also joined online via Zoom. Um, so can you just tell everyone a bit of the background to the work that you have been doing in regards to trying to, um, you know, change the council's uh, way of thinking in regards to representation for us at that table? Yeah, for sure. Um, yep, so I guess I've been in there um, for about three years now. This is my second term being one of the six iwi reps on two of the committees for the council. So there's consents and regulations and policy and planning. So at the moment I'm on consents and regulations, um, along with Mitch Ritai and um, Keith Holswich. Um, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so things have changed a lot since we came on, I reckon. Um, David McLeod's been in there on his own for about 20, 20 something years. It's the only Maori really um, in there. And we've also just changed the, the CEO's changed to a Maori. And um, some of the top management's also coming off, you know, a lot of them being in there like 30, 40 years. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty, just to put it bluntly, it's a pretty pale, stale male kind of environment. Um, but they're in charge of Taiao for, for the whole of Taranaki. Um, yeah, so I guess what's happened recently is we've had these, um, the opportunity to have Māori wards. And um, so a few months ago, the regional council voted in favour of that by two people, two of the councillors. Um, and again, we had um, discussions around how many Māori wards we want. And so the proposal was put forward in a, like a discussion of the area reps and the councillors um, to just have one after sort of debating around the, the laws and the, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but through the submission process, a few of us argued to have two. So they put the option of one or two on the table 
Um, yeah, and so last week they made the decision. So it was a vote of four against seven to go with just one councillor. Um, yeah, and so it, it really comes down to, um, so, okay, so Stratford has um, one person representing about 8,000 people which is kind of outside of the normal rules, which you can do under special circumstances. So we were asking for a similar thing for Māori so that we would have one per about 7,500 for each of the two um, new Māori councillors. Um, but yeah, so the arguments were um, that it would be too many councillors and they'd have to divvy up the pool of money and so people would get paid less and we'd end up with, you know, not the best people running for council because they won't get paid, you know, kind of, quality union <laughs> um, and the other thing was just around um, well, I guess you know the arguments were like it feels right just having one it feels right just having 11 councillors still and that's actually not a legal mm. reason so um, yeah so so we've got until the end of October to either object or appeal if you're already submitted and um, yeah I'll be appealing Hopefully, I'm just trying to work out, you know, if it's going to cost me lots of money and all that kind of stuff. Um, mm. Yeah, because really, like, we, we should have special circumstances. I mean, you know, for, for Taranaki, we never had the chance to vote for a Māori councillor. So, you know, our the numbers on the Māori electoral roll are quite low because, you know, you only get to vote in the national elections and not local ones. So there's no kind of real need to get on there, I suppose, some people might say. Um so you know, those numbers might rise in the next few months or however the process works. So, um, yeah, anyway, it, it's just, yeah, we need special privilege because we have so many other issues to deal with. Uh, you know, Māori processes are different from Pākehā. We don't just go in and talk for ourselves. We talk for our people. We, we have processes of communicating back and forth and um, following tikanga, and it's a lot harder and, yeah, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, we're, yeah. yeah, I'm hopeful we can win. But yeah, we'll see. So just um, in regards to the appeals process, what would that look like? Yeah, well, I, I actually don't know. I've never kind of done, I've never got to that level, I suppose. Um, mm. Yeah, and I guess, you know, often it feels like it's, it's a, a big loss, so why bother? But um, this time it kind of feels like even if we did lose, it's worth, worth having the argument in public in the council arena. Um, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I don't know. Is this something that um, is this something that we need to be on board with? You know, like instead of it just being an you, <laughs> or, no. you know, I, I understand that you're a, a representative of um, like an iwi liaison committee. However, um, is this something that the actual you know iwi around Taranaki, or even further afoot, even um, need to really have a presence at because I have to say, you know, when we um, when we went to the Stratford District Council to get them to vote in the Māori ward, we had a overwhelming support. But when I was sitting in that Zoom the other day, it didn't it, it, it just didn't mirror what we had seen at the uh, Stratford District Council. So is this something that we need to be uh, really pumping and um, sending the message home to our people we're sitting at certain tables, I guess, and saying, hey, we need, this is really important for us because this is Taiao. Like you said, this table makes decisions for Taiao. Um, so that's probably my first question just to come out of that. And then, oh, yeah, we'll go with that. And then I've got another one. I've got another <laughs> one about that too. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so there were um, 14 submitters of which um, – I think it was just Nati Ruanui put in the submission. Um, and Graham Young spoke to that as well. He, he was great. He was pushing for two two wards as well. Um, there was Grant Naki and Paula Lawrence. And um, actually, even the Federated Farmers put in the submission and they were willing to support two Māori wards. Um, like something I didn't mention is that, so in getting one Māori ward, they're going to drop a councillor from the south. So South Taranaki is actually going to lose a seat as well. And so Federated Farmers was arguing to retain that, and if it means having two Māori wards, then they were fine, which was quite surprising. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. I, so I have, yeah, I've asked some of, well, I've asked my iwi if they would put in um, an objection, and I've asked um, Graham to see if Ngāti Ruanui will put an appeal. Um, but yeah, I'm just waiting to hear back. Everyone's kind of, I guess, working out what the process is and the pros and cons and 
how it might work. Yeah. So, yeah, we've got four weeks to do that. Okay. So my second little, well, maybe it's not a question, a discussion point, was um, one of the councillors, he felt that, you know, when you get onto the Taranaki Regional Council, you actually are there to represent the whole of Taranaki, not maybe just the uh, ward that you've been voted in on. Um, and to that, I I took exception to that because I am finding that I, for me personally, I don't feel represented anywhere um, by anyone. It, I'd prefer to be represented by someone who except, at least looks like me. That would be great, for one. Um, but also, I feel like our uh, approach to Taiao is com almost completely different. I guess so. What do you what do you take from that when they are saying things like that? My one of the comments that I made during that meeting was um, how how many of those councillors are actually actively involved with the Maori communities? Um, who who is actively involved with the local marae? Who has a relationship with the hapu and who has a relationship with the iwi? Um, because I can confidently say. I haven't seen any of them down our ways. So <laughs> so would you agree with that? Yeah, well, I mean, let, let's be clear. Donald is um, part of Federated Farmers. So that's his community. That's when he talks about everyone. That's who he thinks of as everyone. And there's quite a few councillors who have been Federated Farmers or Fonterra or Ravensdown. And, you know, it's it's pretty clear who their community is. Um and I suppose to talk about the four who actually voted in favour of the two wards, um, we all know David McLeod, he's Ngāti Rune, um, possibly some other iwi, I'm not too sure. So, um, And then, you know, there's Elvisa, who partners, who husband's Māori. Um, there's Charlotte Littlewood, who's I've really been noticing in the last few years, she's made an effort to be going to Māori events, um, especially like Te Pūtaki, Te Riri. Um, yeah, she's, she's really extending her arm to... To talk to Māori and listen. Um, and then there's Mike Joyce, and um, you know, he came out to the par when we had oh, a yeah. planting Mike day. Joyce. And yeah, and he yeah, was yeah. head of um, Wild for Taranaki for many years. So yeah, I don't know him that well, I but I should um, probably yeah. I should probably point out that what I meant was the ones who voted no. <laughs> I can <laughs> confidently say I haven't really seen them. Michael Joyce, I mean, yeah, he's a different kettle of fish. Um, he lives if it is the Michael Joyce, I think it is, he lives down one of our roads. Um, so, mm. and has had, yeah, 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 interesting interactions over the year, I get, over the years, um, a whānau who, family who have been, yeah, in, in the rohe for a long, 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 long time. Um, but I have to say, the one uh, person who I was really like, oh, yeah, this is awesome, um, was it our, our our visa, did you say? Is that her name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was awesome. Yeah, she's very cool. She's a marine biologist. And um, yeah, she's young. Like, she teaches hip hop to um, Rangatahi in New Plymouth. Like, yeah, she's very cool. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah, the she youngest one at the she... table and one of the newest. Yeah. She had really good um, good points to make. Um, so, we, so, We've already said we have to either submit or appeal, um, and anyone can submit. The appeals process might take a little bit longer um, and be a little bit more involved, uh, but that would be the key, I guess, um, is to submit against it. I just, um, just to say, it's it's object. The submission process finished. Object. Just, just a people want to get object. <laughs> so what does object mean? What does that look like? Um, yeah, well, I guess I, I don't really know yet, but I guess it's objecting the decision that was made. Whereas when you submit, it's you're giving your opinion before a decision's made. So, um, yeah, yeah, I guess just ring up the council and ask them. You know, how does this work? What do we? What do I do? That's what I'll be doing. How do we object? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, kapai. So there you go, Fano. For those of you who are listening in and you want to object to this uh, decision that has been made. Uh, definitely give the council a call and I'll chuck the information, uh, the links and whatever you need um, into the comment section of the interview. Uh, so look below 
at your leisure if you want to do that. Uh, now, another thing for us to talk about is the emissions. So the emissions reduction plan, the government decided it was going to delay um, delay for another five months releasing that. Is that right? Can you talk a little bit yeah, about yeah. that, what the government's decided? Yeah, so they're supposed to sort of have a draft um, in time for the negotiations, climate negotiations in Scotland in November with a sort of, I think the decision was supposed to be made in Parliament by Christmas. Um, but yeah, they've delayed it till May, they say, to um, line up with the budget, which, you know, that could be a good idea. But um, yeah, why delay so long? Yeah, and I suppose like all, all I can hope for is that maybe within that time we can shift some stuff within society because we've got heaps of events happening around climate within those few months. So um, yeah, I guess yeah, if everyone just pushes hard at the, the government to say, you know, actually your plans you've had so far are not good enough and we need to, uh, you know, change a whole lot of the stuff. Um, you know, like some of the things we're really pushing to, um, with our group, um, Climate Justice Taranaki, is to really look at the whole economy and how it's based on basically extraction of resources to export overseas. You know, the same old colonial way of going out to the colonies and taking our stuff to sell overseas. Um, like that, the economy is heavily harmful on workers, on the environment. Um, it involves a whole lot of fossil fuels in the um, extraction, the processing, um, packaging, shipping overseas, trucking around the country, all of that. And, you know, a lot of that product is just wasted um, or it's not even needed, you know, like milk powder, like milk powder sent over to um, Asia and stuff is destroying small farming communities over there or, you know, it's, it's making it so that bosses can keep workers in Chinese factories because they don't need to press feed because they've got powdered milk from New Zealand, you know, and yeah, it's, it's just a messy, messy thing that has so many problems with it. So, um, you know, if they're actually harder on the farming industry and say, you know, let's just stick to local, healthy, regenerative um, farm, you know, dairy products, whatever, agricultural stuff, and, and focus on our economy, then we will actually cut down greenhouse gas emissions a hell of a ton. You know, heaps of um, whānau from farmers will actually come back. I and mean, we're seeing that already, that, um, you know, it's really hard to get people into dairy at the moment. That, that's why they're hiring all these, like, poor Filipino workers to come in. Um, mm. But we're seeing a, a resurgence of young people coming back who want to do different things, like get into horticulture or market gardening or, um, you know, selling their own milk at the door, that kind of stuff, because it's, it's way healthier and way more fun and you know, like $40 billion in debt, like the whole dairy industry is. So, yeah, anyway. <laughs> ram, ram, ram. Yeah, no, well, that's such a, that's a, that's a point, though. I mean, we all know, we all got whānau who are in, who are farmers, uh, and totally. the last yeah. thing that we want is for them to all of a sudden be out of employment and, and what are they doing, but the truth of the matter is is that things need to change, and there are some um, farmers out there who are changing uh, like you say, and starting to do those things, sell the milk from the door. Um, and, you know, yeah. the hope for someone like me would be that if I was going to buy a block of cheese, it wouldn't be $12, <laughs> you know, for a kg yeah, yeah. of cheese. Somehow uh, the cheese that is manufactured and made down like five kilometres from my door is not going to cost me more than the petrol that it's taken me to get there, I guess, to bloom and buy it. But um, so, so yeah, that's such a, I mean, I'm just blown away, you know, that these, that we're exporting um, milk powder over to a country and then that's actually, I'm not blown away, but it's a point to be made. Everything like that has an effect on the local uh, market in those, those okay. countries. So we're making money off exploitation in a sense. Um <laughs> Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. God, yeah. Come like on, it, it goes into the, the poor countries where we undercut their local product, and so they can't sell their own local stuff. And our kind of dehydrated, processed stuff is is pushed by these big companies based in New Zealand. So, yeah, it's pretty sad. But uh, yeah, you know, a lot of people don't know that. So. Yeah, and then they're um, 
and then I guess that has a longer other effects on their health also because then they're um, almost you know consuming artificial cod all over again oh my goodness yeah. gracious all right now this is a rabbit hole you and i could drive <laughs> drive all the way down into however <laughs> however fun um so what do you because i really i don't i honestly i know and i don't think people really understand um where we're at in regards to climate change and um the absolute need for us to reduce our um, emissions immediately. And so you guys have been pushing to um, public transport, a better pl public transport plan around the Maunga um, to try and contribute to the reduction of the emissions. What can you explain um, to people out there who really probably don't or may not have a total grasp on it, but how something like using public transport a, a little change in your life uh, could actually contribute in a big way. Yeah, well, I guess to start back at um, the problem, so, you know, most of us now, if we have our own cars. You know, in some families, every member of the family has their own car. And, of course, that puts out a whole lot of greenhouse gases, um, not to mention building roads everywhere and all the other pollution. Um, and I guess for a long time, people have said, oh, you know, we, we can just switch to electric vehicles once we've got, you know, affordable vehicles and the system that can handle that amount of power. But actually, the problem with electric vehicles is once again, you're still mining. And to mine stuff, you still have to use a whole lot of energy to move that stuff and process it. But, but one of the crucial bits is that every electric vehicle um, motor, whatever you call it, needs um, platinum. And platinum only comes really from a few places, typically poor communities in Africa. And it's running out. There's not enough platinum for the whole world to switch to an electric vehicle for, you know, generations to come. And plus, they don't want us mining in their country. <laughs> they don't want all the pollution and hazards and social problems that they're having to, you know, workers who are basically not being paid and looked after properly. Um, so really the, the solution, oh, so plus also, you know, electric vehicles, again, also puts a lot of stress on our electricity um, network, you know, so rather than using it to say, you know, run heaters or run the, the oven, we, we're using it for people to drive down to the dairy to get a bottle of milk in a plastic bottle. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, so the idea is that rather than all of us having our own private vehicles, is that we, we have to learn to share again, like we used to not that long ago. And, you know, most people in cities are still doing that. It's, it's really just in the rural areas, the provinces, like here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so the problem with our public transport in Taranaki is that, what, like 95%, I guess, of our, our money, our rates and taxes goes into roading and private vehicle stuff. So there isn't really investment of any decent sort going into public transport. So hence we have a not very good service. It doesn't, you know, like where I live, there's one bus a week on a Friday that goes to town for most of the day and then comes home. So if you miss that bus, you're hitching or you're asking someone to pick you up. So, you know, that puts people off. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, the, the prices have just come down, which is good. But um, yeah, basically the more people that use it, the more pressure there is to to protect it and make it better. And of course, then we'll have a better system that everyone can use and will get us to work and to school like people in the city can do. Yeah, so there's only one bus that goes out there, out to you guys once a week. Yeah, one public yeah. bus. There's school buses, but we're not allowed on the school buses. Right, yeah. okay. And so that's something but... for us all to think about. Yeah, so um, mm, I really enjoyed your uh, presentation you gave us at Te One Kākara, um, oh. the, the research symposium, Taranaki um, Research Symposium. And I think a lot of what you had was quite easy to understand too um, in oh. regards to what we can do ourselves. And it does come down to, well, for me, what I got out of it was it comes down to, and I've spoken about this on Kōnia Hi Kōrero before, um, is our own um, addiction to consumerism, I think. You know, like, do you, do you reckon or what? Is it, 
I, I, I feel like we're quite wasteful people. Yeah, I guess I wouldn't put the blame on ourselves. Like, there's a massive multi-billion dollar marketing, you know, industry out there that pushes the stuff at us constantly. Everywhere, you know, in the newspapers, on ads on Facebook, and you know, we're bombarded with the stuff. So of course we think that that's normal to want to go buy stuff all the time. And yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Like individual consumerism is a problem, but the bigger problem is what's making us want to do that. So that's why I kind of right. shy away from individual solutions and more look at social change. Yeah, yeah right. Um, and so driven by economy too, I guess. So yeah, looking at social change, um, and you guys have a huge project, oh, is it a project, Kaupapa, uh, in regards to Marakai, um, and we see that sort of spreading around, that sort of thought about um, our own manomotuhake in regards to how we grow our own kai, um, and what that looks like for all of us. I had Po Namu on here uh, last week talking about the Te Kahui o Taranaki um, initiative that's going out at the moment, and they're trying to get gardens into each whānau home, one, yeah, each whānau home. Uh, however, you guys have been doing this for a little bit now, the big community um, approach to growing kai for everyone, and, and it seems to... Not that I've been involved in it, <laughs> just from observation. <laughs> it seems to be picking up, I guess, but um, probably a lot of work for you and you and Ors uh, and the others who lead it. But do do you see a change? Can you, can you feel the revolution? Is there a revolution on the rise? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's definitely a change. Um, and I suppose, you know, it's just slowly, you know, people starting to drift back home, those of us who've, you know, had to leave. Um, well, not that we're, like, driving it, sorry. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, I guess just people coming back to the whenua a bit more and um, seeing the more and putting your hands in the dirt and growing stuff and helping look after plants. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I guess, you know, and so with, with that comes, you know, the mana motuhake of being kaitiaki and being able to feed ourselves and know how to fit within taio and um look after our communities really yeah but yeah. i suppose yeah it, it, it's gonna take a while because you know there's still a lot of people who feel whakama or that they don't know enough or you know they're scared of the worms and the things and getting their fingernails dirty and that takes time you know yeah i've been doing this for a while so i'm kind of used to it but um yeah yeah and, and it's also just trying to fit it into your lifestyle like a garden is not something you can kind of just do here and there you need to kind of be yeah. looking you know doing something maybe at least once a week Depending on, you know, if you're growing trees, it's a different story. So start with trees, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, oh, well, there's no but to that. Yep. Kei te tika o kore ro katoa. Uh, you're the expert here. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I would think, oh, not I would think. So what I've stuck to is just growing the things I know I can grow and will be successful at. So, yeah. like, I don't have a huge range. Just grow a silver beet because I know I can grow it really hard to kill silver beet etifano like yeah, yeah, yeah. real real hard um same with rhubarb I don't even like rhubarb to be honest I don't <laughs> care for it but I know you can't really kill that either um and like I've said before I can grow a good lettuce uh and then Mike's got his things too that he's good at growing so between us um you know we've got yeah. a bit of a variety going on up there so um would that be good uh advice to give to people to just you know start off start off small and um and just yeah don't go too hardcore in the beginning <laughs> yeah totally yeah, yeah like like don't plan to fail i guess you know like stick yeah. to yeah, like start with you know three things maybe and once you've sussed that then maybe add a couple or yeah just yeah start small what you said start that's perfect <laughs> So yeah. coming up um, in November, there is a um, you, your climate justice Taranaki. Uh, you have a uh, a kaupapa that is being planned for. Uh, so can you tell everyone a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, so it's called Rise Up for Climate Justice. 
Um, it's an event that will go from the 3rd of November to the 7th of November. Um, and it's it's um, bringing a whole lot of different climate, social justice, environmental groups from across Aotearoa into South Taranaki um, during the climate negation, negotiations in um, Scotland. So that's when all the world leaders and all that get together to um, work out how we're going to wheedle away around the climate crisis. Um, so, yeah, so we'll be staying at um, Aotearoa Marae and uh, people can stay at the campgrounds if they want or maybe tent. We're still trying to work out how to get around the whole COVID, um, you know, health guidelines so everyone's yeah. safe. Um, yeah. yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so so it's a bit of a fucker for knowing Atanga. Like, um, we know that the climate, climate justice movement is not very big and it needs to grow because the next sort of eight years are really crucial for um, implementing policies and um, just habit change and stuff in their communities so that we, we might actually get through the climate crisis without total disaster. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, so the first day, so yeah, like the, the evening of the third and the fourth will be sort of wānanga and whakawhanaunga tanga, um, still sharing, so some hands-on stuff and some, you know, sit down and listen to kōrero kind of things. Um, we'll have people in person and we'll try to um, zoom in some people as well. Um, but yeah, the, so the fifth, of course, is the Pākua um, for Parihaka. So mm -hmm. that will be a day of preparation, but also an action linking um, colonisation with climate change, because really climate change is all about, you know, the, the kings and queens of Europe sending out their people to go and claim resources from the rest of the, country, the, rest of the world. And, you know, this is the result. It's um, yeah, great inequality, um, mass extinction and, you know, pulling out pollution in the air because we've destroyed so many forests and all of that. Um, mm. Yeah, so that we haven't decided exactly what we'll be doing, but um, we'll let people know <laughs> that um, action may involve pulling some pegs of some sort. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but yeah, this, so the 6th is the International Day of Action for Climate Justice. And so that will be a, um, more of a long day of action, um, which again, yeah, we still haven't, we haven't decided exactly where and how, but um, if those of you who know the South Tanaki, you know there's, there's Fonterra, there's um, Balanced Agri-Nutrients, there's multiple oil and gas um, production stations and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, we'll let people know. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, so so that's the sixth. And the seventh is just a really um, Poroaki clean-up. Um, for those of us from Pariaka, we'll be heading up there for the, the Pahua. For the Papa, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, can you, so the dates again? Can you just uh, rattle off the dates and the main focal yeah. point? I guess being Aotearoa Pa. Yeah. So third, third to the seventh of November, um, staying at Aotearoa Marae, Aotearoa Pa. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. And the, the main main kopa is, I guess, to focus on the the big polluters. You know. Um, yeah. yeah. Rather than on, on individual issues problems that are caused by communities, but it's fo focusing on the big companies that make up most of our greenhouse gas pollution. And just before we wrap it up, um, when you're talking about the the big companies and the big um, polluters, so we know that, um, oh, actually, you, you'd be able to explain it more. In regards to the oil and gas, where are we at in Taranaki with the oil and gas? There's um, a few more wells in that popping up. What, what's our situation here? Yeah, um, so what I'm aware of is that, so officially we banned offshore, new offshore um, oil and gas drilling, but um, it's still going on in Taranaki onshore. And there's some offshore wells which they're expanding. So it's still happening onshore and offshore. <laughs> Um, we got two new permit blocks this year for Taranaki um, around New Plymouth, um, New Plymouth, Inglewood, that kind of way. And this year we've also had three seismic surveys going on. Um, so there's one currently, I think, about to start around Egmont Village, um, Inglewood way. Um, and that's Greymouth and um, another another new company. 
yeah, so they're still drilling away. And, and you know, and there's other existing wells that Todd's got, which are um, putting down extra wells. I think there was another two, 22 new wells that went down around um, Tukurangi this year, but possibly still drilling. Um, yeah, so it's not over. And now, yeah, they've got plans for hydrogen as well, which is another whole story. <laughs> Can we talk about that? Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, hydrogen. <laughs> so, um, Basically, it, it's the great new hope that so, you know, there's this idea that we can switch to electric vehicles, which I've just talked about, but there's also an idea that we can switch to um, hydrogen fuel, particularly for things like trucks, trains, aeroplanes, um, the cargo ships, because electric um, motors just can't handle big vessels like that. Um, but the problem with hydrogen is it either needs to um, be made using natural gas, which of course is bad, um, or it can be used, or it can be made from using um, renewable energy. So basically, you use energy to take the hydrogen out of water. You're splitting water, which yeah. goes against all that to go on. But, um, yes. Yeah. So yeah. So with um, if you are using renewable energy, which they're planning to do um, in Taranaki, well, a mixture of renewable and gas. We're still trying to work out what they're trying to do. Um, the problem with that is that it uses a lot of renewable energy. So rather than using that renewable energy to directly, you know, power an electric vehicle, you use maybe like 20 times that to make hydrogen to charge another vehicle. And so it's just really wasteful. Um, and in the process, you know, they talk about also making urea fertilizer, um, which again pollutes the soil and gives off more. Um, greenhouse gases but yeah but basically yeah it, it's a really expensive wasteful system that is, isn't going to solve our problems and we, we really just need to stop trucking and shipping large quantities of resources we extract from Papatunuku and um, switch to local local economies yeah that would be the key right because we're oh, this is what gets me <laughs> We're always trying to um, just put another plaster on top of another problem. Uh, yeah. And by doing that, you just create an old, a whole other problem. And, you know, it looks, you know, to, to a person who's trying to contribute, it could look like the absolute answer. But I think there's been other countries who, who have been here, right? And they've, like, walked away from hydrogen. And yet, and then here's, here's us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is us yeah. going with it. Yeah. What, yeah, what do you there's, say about that? Yeah, there's a good oh. film that was made about um, maybe about 20 years ago called End of Suburbia, which talked about, you know, could we just switch to hydrogen? And it, and it laid out, you know, having to change all the infrastructure across the entire country. This was set in the States, um, changing all our vehicles, you know, like just the huge cost of changing all that was just unmanageable and, you know, impossible. And yet we think we can do that here. <laughs> um, yeah, like there's a few trials going on in, um, in the UK, but it's they're very much um, like controlled to just one village, that kind of thing. And you know, mm. heaps of public money has been pumped into these these projects. And yeah, basically, you know, there's, this technology has been around for a long time. And there's a reason it never got off the ground because it's just not cost efficient. So trying to push it yeah. now is just the oil and gas company is trying to keep the industry alive by pretending to be a little bit greener. But yeah, yeah, it's not going to cut the muscle. Yes. <laughs> um, now, okay, so I just want to do a quick recap on the electric car thing, okay? Because, you know, I was one who was like, holy heck, I'd love for my um, petrol bill to go down to, you know, like $7 or something of electricity. However, really what I need to do is just figure out a different way of traveling um you know i carpooling and all of that sort of stuff jump on the bus when i can it's working out for me at the moment because i'm working from home so i'm not traveling anywhere so that's the greatest part um yeah. so the electric cars also because my tani you know as i was harping on to him about the electric car and he's like it, it's it, it's a silly move for us um, well, not a silly move, but his his explanation was he's just going to have a whole heap of other cars sitting around rotting. Oh, well, not rotting, you know, but um, what would you call it? 
just sitting around because you're just trying to remove this problem, but you're just putting them all over here, and then you're making a whole heap of more cars. But the difference is one's electric and one's not. Is that is that right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, like, and I think there's, there's a lot of good, there's good things about electric cars. Um, you know, for people who can't take public transport or, um, you know, people who need to move products, so, you know, there's like the Kaitaki Market Gardens, they have a little electric truck that takes all their produce to market, to the shops and restaurants and that. Um, and, you know, there's electric buses and, yeah, like, like we just need to use electric vehicles more efficiently so that they're used where there is no alternative and that they take as many people as possible and that kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got to find that good balance, eh? Yeah, yeah. And okay, yeah, what well, to do with the old cars, yeah. <laughs> Melt them yes, down. That was, that was his thing. It was like, what's going to happen with all the old cars? if Because the way that we track, these are the sorts of things that we do as humans, is, okay, we're moving on to the next thing. I don't care about how you get rid of all of that lot. That's not my problem. I'm doing my, I'm, I'm contributing uh, positively because I'm moving on to this lot. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's what his, his, um, his court level was. Anyway, so uh, tuhiao, e mihi ana ki koe. Uh, and thank you for all of your kōrero too um, I think it's, it always comes at a good time uh, there's a few things for us to think about and I will chuck into the comment section um, some links and phone numbers for those of you who want to get in touch with the TRC in regards to objecting the latest decision on representation and um, if I can find that link on that movie that you said that you just spoke about too, oh, that yeah. documentary. I'll chuck that in the comment section to Etefano. Narada emihianaki kaito katoa kwa hono mai nei ki te nei o ngā hotaka o koni a ikorero marunga te reo irirangi o te kori mako o taranaki marunga te barangi puka matara nei. Thank you all for listening. Narada Etefano. Thank you to him. Thank you for finding the time. Um, to, to sit with us this morning also. Uh, nā reire te whānau, uh, kia haumaru ai tonu, te noho ki roto i wā koutou kāinga, uh, noho ora mai, hei kona, hei kona. <laughs>